So last night the power company came and replaced this transformer. That was why the power was out. That's why I made a video on putting nut on my pie. After that video, there were a lot of great discussions in the comments on the video and on the blog. And I hope that the sound comes through because the wind is just ridiculous this morning. There's also a train going by. I think I might head inside and we'll continue the discussion over there. Okay. And you probably can't see me. Oh, you can see me. Okay, that's good. Well, there was a lot of great discussion in the comments. And uh, I mean, generally speaking, how did the outage go? Because I did a dry run of everything, but a dry run isn't always uh, complete, which I found out right before the power outage. And I had that patch cable in the last video and I had been meaning to crimp it. In fact, I ran this new cable but I forgot my crimping tools and I forgot again today, they're at home. So I ran this cable because I realized that the cable that I had back to this rack, this is on a separate UPS and these UPSs are much smaller and that would have caused some issues because um, as I found out during the full power outage, which I didn't test the whole system, I just tested this rack, that rack went down after about 20 minutes, this rack went down after an hour. The nut pie would have lost communication with the rest of the network and that would have been terrible. So. I, before, right before the, the power outage happened, I remembered that that was the case and I plugged this in and yeah, I could have routed this cable a little better, but we're going to get this cable in, uh, maybe at some point. Uh, who knows, maybe in the next video that you see in the rack room, you'll see this cable hanging out here again. I don't know. Right before the power outage, I went into my uh, Pi Nut repository, which I had automated everything in and double checked everything because I know the video that I made before was kind of a rush because I needed to finish something before well, I, I didn't know exactly when the outage would happen. So it's a planned outage that's unscheduled and unknown when it will be. So I don't know how much planning they did, but um, eventually after I posted that video, they mentioned that it would be on Monday, which was yesterday. So at least we had a window, but I didn't have to rush so much. So yesterday before I went home, I checked over the configs and I found out that there were a couple glaring issues. You can see here, besides that uh, encrypted stuff, I was actually checking the wrong server. So. The, uh, the NAS, my main NAS and the, the NVR would, both, would have both not even seen that it was, you know, time to shut down. So that was bad. Uh, and also, uh, this was actually, to ignore this, I actually undid that because that was wrong. Uh, I also was missing this UPSmon primary in the configuration. I updated my blog post for that too because that was a little bit incorrect. Uh, someone in the comments actually pointed out that it was incorrect. You have to do this, otherwise that user won't be able to monitor the, uh, the UPS. So I had it all working and then I automated it and I made it not work. So when you automate something that you did manually the first time, maybe recheck everything by deleting all the configurations and redoing them automatically and then seeing if they still work, which I didn't do. And if it was just the nut server, the, the little Raspberry Pi, that wouldn't be a big deal. I'd, I'm not as worried about that one just having a hard power cut. It's more the NAS, which has all of my data on it, which is using ZFS and I'm not as worried, but still it's nice to shut down safely if you can. And then the NVR, which has hard drives and is running on a Raspberry Pi, which I do want it to shut down. Uh, but at the end of the day, I triple checked everything, made sure that it was running correctly. And um, I made sure that the playbook, I reran it a couple times to make sure nothing was wrong in it. And I checked the logs. And I was like, okay, we're ready for this. And I headed home. And at home, I recorded the whole thing. I had, uh, I, I had it through the VPN. So I knew that the VPN would go away at some point, but I wanted to see when the power outage happened, how that looked. And it showed that the UPS went on battery. Uh, it also showed that my camera, if there's no power, if there's no lights outside, the camera, I think I need to clean the dome because it was a bit, uh, a bit dirty in there with the internal IR lights. And about 20 minutes in, my VPN connection went away. So you can see that the footage just stops updating here. And those, the wall UPSs, the little ones that I have mounted on the wall, don't have much runtime, maybe 15 to 20 minutes. What I should probably do is I should either get a better UPS for that rack if I want to keep the two racks independent, or uh, someone mentioned in the comments that I could route the PD, route a PDU from the main rack into the mini rack, like have a, a little PDU in the mini rack that gets its power from the main rack UPS. That would work, but then the main rack UPS has more load on it. And I kind of like the idea of having the two racks completely independent. The one on the wall is like critical networking, routing, uh, firewall, all that kind of stuff. And then the main rack is my servers. I also can see that my uh, Simply Safe notifications uh, were, were helpful in terms of getting, getting an idea of what happened when. 
The doorbell cam showed low power at 825, so that was a few minutes after the power loss. Uh, the Wi-Fi went out at 830, so that was about 20 minutes on that little, the little wall mount UPS. And then full power outage at 854, that means that all the batteries had depleted and the battery inside the Simply Safe and all that. I've, I've been happy with Simply Safe actually. I've, I've have not had any issues besides that doorbell that tried to burn down the studio, which you can see more about in moving vlog 12. But I do have a couple other things that I wanted to clarify too in this video. So uh, let me pop over to the screen again here. So I'm logged into my uh, primary NAS and I just wanna make sure that it did shut down on uh, UPS battery low. So I can say uh, sudo journal control dash B dash one. Uh, so if I go down to the end of this log file, you can see that it was around uh, 9.09, I think that was, because this is in UTC. Uh, that's 3.09 uh, UTC, finally shut down, and there should be a message somewhere up here, and I think it's in red. Yeah, here we go. So it started the shutdown process at, at 3.09 or 9.09 p.m. It only took like 20-something uh, 20, 20 seconds to do the final shutdown, so that's not that bad at all. I, I had, a, I think, a 180-second timeout for it, but I could probably tighten that up a bit uh, if I do some more testing with the shutdown process. Uh, so there were a lot of questions after the last video. It was kind of off the cuff and I didn't, I didn't really go through, normally when I make a video, I, I try to think of like, what are the five or 10 questions people might ask and try to nail those in the video to kind of head that off. People still ask the questions anyway, because seriously, how many people actually watch a full video? Just like nobody reads an article, you read the headline and you post a comment right away. Some of the main questions that I didn't answer were, uh, what if my older UPS has a serial port? Uh, Nut actually has uh, configurations for serial ports and there's a lot of different cables and adapters that you can make to go from USB to serial. So um, I have some links in here to get to that. This is on my blog and I'll link to that in the description. Also, uh, is it insecure to have a plain text password in your upsmon.config file or in the users file? Yes, yes. I mean, there's a lot of things that we do that uh, are not like as secure as they could be. It's to me, it's not a huge thing, especially if you have a user that has limited privileges. So I'm not I'm not harping on that security wise. Um, and also, I like I don't I use the observer account so that it can't shut down the UPS or cause your servers to shut down. So it's you know you're limiting the privileges a little bit that way. And also, if you make that file with the correct ownership, um, you know, 6, 644 or 640, I think it is, then other users wouldn't be able to, to see it anyway. So you're relying on Linux's own security. So there's other ways that you could secure things, but this is good enough for what it is. What about the scenario where power is restored before everything's shut down? So let's say uh, the battery reaches critical um, and then Nut says, okay, every, everybody shut down and then power comes back right after that. So the servers might start shutting down and power comes back and then the UPS comes on, will the servers boot back up? In the case of NUT, what I believe happens, and this is what happened when I, when I tested it and last night, but I didn't test the scenario where you re reapply power while things are shutting down, but I believe what would happen is it will still send out the UPS load turn off event after it says, okay, time to shut down. And uh, what that'll do is your UPS will go into load off and then you're relying on your UPS to be smart enough to say uh, the load is off, the power is reapplied when that was sent or right before that was sent or something and then it would come back on. That's really a thing that you can configure in your UPS if it's smart enough. If it's not, I don't know. Uh, that's something that you might want to test. But that's also a scenario where having uh, a UPS that has its own capabilities for remote management might be useful if you're in a really mission critical environment and having a remote PDU that has its own remote control facilities, like the one that I showed off in the last video right at the end. Uh, and finally, this was the easiest one to answer. How did all my servers power back on automatically after the power fail? And they did so this morning as well. Well, for Raspberry Pis, by default, they're just set to boot up when power is applied, so that's easy. Uh, and for most other computers, you can set in the BIOS or in the BMC if you have uh, servers with uh, board management controllers, you can set, like, what do you do after power is reapplied? Do you turn on? Do you stay off? Uh, that kind of thing. So on my main server, the, the NAS, uh, I can actually set it to, like, have the BMC come up, which happens when power is applied, and not turn on if I wanted, and then I could turn it on manually later, but I just have it set to boot back up. And some people said that would be risky if your battery's low and the power comes on and the power goes off again and all that. But even with the battery at 10% on this UPS, it gives you know 10 or 20 minutes, which is enough time for another boot and shutdown cycle. So 
I'm not too worried, and I believe on this UPS, it won't reapply the load until the battery charges up like three or 5% or something. So there should be enough margin, but you know, how far are we willing to go in making this like as robust as possible? For me, this is good enough. It's a lot better than what I had where the server would just hard shut down in the past power outages. So I'm happier now than I was uh, a couple weeks ago. One other thing that a few people had mentioned was uh, using SNMP. So the UPS in the video, I, when I, put the Pi in, I noticed that there's actually an ethernet jack. There's a little card in the UPS that I believe provides SNMP uh, communications for the UPS. So your servers could get the status directly through the UPS over the network with SNMP authentication. I am not that familiar with SNMP. I also had no idea that the UPS had the card installed. So I, I might set that up. Um, NUT actually has net SNMP. Uh, so you can integrate SNMP with NUT so that servers that don't have SNMP support could still be shut down through NUT. So I might do that. Uh, we'll see. I think the main takeaway for me, the most important thing is always be learning. Like this whole thing was an opportunity for me to learn about uh, power, about uh, systems management, disaster recovery, uh, triple checking all my backup setups, uh, triple checking all of the UPS configurations, what's plugged into what in my racks. If, if you're not learning, then you know, what, what's the point of, of doing this? It's part of the human experience to learn and, and get better. And really, every time that you have an outage, this, was, this applies to software development, to uh, sysadmin, to you know, life in general. If you have a problem, if you have an outage, it's an opportunity to do better next time. If the power goes out again, I'm better prepared now, and hopefully I can be even better prepared in the future for the next one. There's no better way to learn things than trial by fire. And it's, it's kind of a sad reality because you don't want to have that fire. You don't want to have the pain. But anyway, I got to get on to some other things. I have other videos to work on, and this is going to be a short week again. So I will uh, see you around soon.